Render.com is a cloud provider that provides unified place to run your web apps with auxiliary services like Postgres database or Redis in-memory cache, cron jobs, etc. They have fixed monthly pricing based on the hardware you provision, where price increases the more RAM or CPU you choose for a service or storage you choose for your database. Render offers quick starts for various runtimes such as Node, Python, Ruby and PHP, and you might think how unfortunate that Java is not on the list. Fortunately, Docker is. Our goal for this video is to demonstrate Render.com features. First, we'll deploy a simple Spring Boot project, then showcase how to provision Postgres database. After we've done that, we'll use render.com blueprints feature to automatically provision and connect Spring Boot service, Postgres database and Redis in-memory cache. First things first, we need to sign in to render and I'll use my GitHub account to do that. We can log into the service after we verified our email. On the dashboard, we have the option to deploy static sites, web services, Postgres database, Redis in memory, key value data store, etc. I prepared a simple Spring Boot project that only has one controller that returns local date time. So when we refresh our home page, we can see something changes. If we start our project and hit localhost 8080, we'll see timestamp changing value every time we refresh. I've uploaded a project to GitHub and there's a couple of things I'd like to point out. First, project contains Docker file that has the instructions of how to build our Java app into a Docker image. Secondly, our project contains Docker publish GitHub actions workflow that will publish our Docker image to GitHub Docker container registry. If you are not familiar with GitHub Actions, I'll link a video in the description where you can find out more. If you go to the Actions tab of our project, we'll see that the Docker Publish workflow has already been executed and if you go to the root of the project, we'll see that the new package has been created, the Docker package with the latest tag. And we can use this Docker image in our render.com deploy. There are two ways to deploy web services from Docker images in render.com. One is to link to already published image in Docker Hub or in our case in GitHub Docker container registry. And the other one is to link to GitHub or GitLab repository that has Docker file. Our project has both. If you go to render dashboard and try to create new web service, we'll see only an option to link to public Git repository. Deploying from external Docker registries is in early access at the time of this recording, so it needs to be enabled by going to Account Settings, Early Access and enabling the feature. If you go to Dashboard and try to create new web service, we'll see different options now. Let's first use the first option by deploying from Git repository and we'll go to our GitHub and link to this repository we just created. We'll give our service a name, boot render deploy git repository, we can choose between different regions and we'll deploy from our master branch. Render correctly suggests us Docker runtime because Java is not supported directly. We'll choose the free instance type and create a service. This deploy took Docker file from the root of our repository, built an image and then deployed it automatically. You can expect deployment to take a couple of minutes and once it's done, you will be greeted with a URL where you can access your application. And if we refresh, we see a new timestamp generated every time. Our app was deployed successfully. Nice. If you go to our service settings, we'll see various settings and one I want to draw attention to is auto deploy, which is set to yes. This means that for every push to our repository, new deployment will be created. You might or might not want to do that. Possibly you'd want your CI-CD pipeline to run first and only if the test pass, then deploy. For such cases, render.com offers deploy hook, which is a URL specific for a service that you call when you want to trigger a deploy. Let's use this feature in our project. First, we'll disable auto deploy. And then we'll copy the deploy hook URL value, go to our GitHub. In the settings of our project, 
we'll go to secrets and variables and in the actions we'll input the new repository secret. We'll call it render deploy hook and we'll add it. You'd normally deploy by calling this URL at the end of your CI CD workflow, but to simulate, we'll just create a workflow that will trigger manually. We'll create a new workflow, call it render deploy. And we'll just curl the render deploy hook. The workflow will be triggered manually on a workflow dispatch event. So if we commit our changes, if we go to the events of our service, we'll see that the new deploy has not been triggered. So let's go to our repository, to our actions and trigger our workflow manually. That should curl basically our deploy hook. And once that's done, we should see a new event and deploy has started. Let's next create a new web service, but instead of linking to our Git repository, we'll link to our Docker image registry. We'll go to our GitHub project, to our packages, to our latest Docker registry and copy the value. Click next. We'll input our service name, this time docker registry, pick a free instance and create a web service. This time render instead of creating an image from our docker file, we'll just take the image from our docker registry and start the service. Once our deploy has succeeded, we can drill down into our service and open a URL and try to refresh a couple of times. Our service is working correctly. Nice. Next, let's see how to create Postgres database on render. We'll click new and choose Postgres SQL. We'll need to give the database a name. Let's call it DB and the other fields are not mandatory. We'll pick free instance type and create a database. Once our database instance is available, we can drill down into it and see the connection parameters. If you want to connect to our database instance, from the service that's running on render.com, we'll use internal database URL and we'll use external database URL if you want to connect to it from outside. I've opened dBeaver, which is a tool for working with databases and copied the external database URL, which consists of a couple of parts. This is the user, this is the password, then at, this is the host name, and this is the schema name. So let's try to create new Postgres connection and connect to the database. Host will be host. Database will be the last part. User will be this one. Password will be this one. We'll test the connection and connect. We can try to create new SQL worksheet and select time of day from our database just to make sure it works. We'll use this function that's a built-in Postgres function in our next project. The reason why we can access our database from the outside is because we have the access control rule that allows everyone outside of our private network to connect to our database. That can be useful if we want to connect to our database from the outside, but security-wise, it's better to forbid public access to the database and allow only access from the private network. So we can do that by deleting the rule. If we now go to our dBeaver and try to reconnect, we'll see that the connection can no longer be established. The way you connect your service that's running on render to your database instance is by using the connections parameter that the instance provides in the environment variables of the service. You can delete your service by going to settings. On the bottom, there is a delete web service. You'll need to type in something that the render demands you to, and this will delete your service. I've deleted our two web services and database instance, so we have a clear slate for our next project. For our next Spring Boot project, we want to use Postgres database and Redis. 
it's not so much how we use the resources, it's about proving the point that we can connect to them. And we use the Postgres time of day building function and Redis hash. To enable local development, we use Docker Compose that will spin up Redis and Postgres instances for us. And we use application properties to connect to them. We have Redis host, Redis port and Spring data source properties. We can spin up our services by running docker compose app minus d for detached in the root of our project. We can start our app and then go to localhost 8080. If we go to the root of our site, this will give us Postgres time of day function. And if we can go to slash menu and we'll get three dummy Redis cache items. Instead of creating services manually like we did so far, render offers alternative way by using blueprint specs. You create blueprint specs by providing render.yaml file at the root of your repository and that's an infrastructure as code file that you list your services, your databases and the way they link to each other. I've created render.yaml at the root of our project and we have two web services. One will be created from the docker file at the root of our project and another one will be created from the image and we have a Redis instance and the database. The way you connect database and Redis instance with your web services is by using name, in our case database is elephant and Redis is Redis, and then providing environment variables in the services. For example, you say that Redis host, which is the variable our service expects, should be populated from the Redis service and the property is host. This is the building property that render provides host, port, in the case of database connection string. And one detail is that the connection string that render provides for our database starts with Postgres and our application expects URL that starts with JDBC. So we provide a key Spring Data Source URL that's concatenated from other values that render provides, like host, port, and schema name. I've pushed the project to the GitHub and one thing you need to make sure if you have render YAML file with multiple services that need to talk to each other is that they are in the same region. And for all we used free plan. And again we ran workflow that published Docker package to our repository. So now we can go to our repository and create a new blueprint instance. We'll call it boot Postgres Redis and we notice that render automatically detects all the services that we want to create. We'll click apply. And then starts the service creation. We can also see that in the dashboard. We can try to test one of our services that deployment succeeded on. And we see our timestamp. After a while our service will become unstable and we'll get 502 error and you'll find out that when you start adding connections to the database or Redis, resources from the free tier won't be enough. Resources from the free tier are more or less good enough for proof of concept. You can increase resources for your services and you can track billing in your billing section where you can see how much will you be charged. And you are charged by the time spent on the appropriate tier. This means you can test which tier is enough for your service. Maybe go to a higher tier and if that's too much, lower it down to a lower tier. Next, we'll try to deploy Spring Social to Cloud, Spring Boot application that uses Postgres database and allows us a social login via Google and GitHub. I'll leave a link to the YouTube playlist that demonstrates how to build this application and I've added the render YAML file on the root that's a blueprint file that will create our Postgres database and connect it to our web instance. I've deleted previous web services and Postgres and Redis instance on render.com so we have a clean slate and created a new blueprint instance which is now syncing. Once you add your card information on your billing page, you can change instance types. I've connected to the newly created Postgres database from the outside as so that the migrations were ran. So by using the free tier, we have proof of concept that the application works, but the startup time is multiple minutes and the performance is horrible. 
So let's try to upgrade the tier of our database and one of our web service to see how will that affect performance. First, let's go to the database, to the instance type and change it to standard. This gives more RAM, CPU and storage than the free instance. I'll also mention that for Postgres, every paid instance includes automated daily backups and the standard instance type we chose costs 20 bucks a month. Next, let's go to one of our web services, to our settings and change instance type to one grader, which includes more CPU and costs 7 bucks per month. By looking at the logs, we can see that this time our service started in 58 seconds. It appears that the web service is now alive and we can check the URL and it seems the app is responsive. I'll just point out that you get HTTPS with render by default. So to conclude with free instance types you won't get far but already starter and standard instances provide satisfactory performance for small to medium Spring Boot app that connects to Postgres database. I'll leave a link in YouTube descriptions for repositories I've used in demonstration.